be hanging, how they should be mounted, but constantly having in mind the space of the gallery, being familiar with the space, it helps you to visualize. So, uh, equally exciting. And then the last part is bringing the work to the gallery, propping it against the wall, deciding on the layout, and again, another technical issue of how things will be hanging, how they should be um, uh, playing against each other. And at this stage, you can see that the show, which you have conceived as a, as a whole, is really working as, as a total concept. And that's very satisfying. This is a very difficult show to install because there are so many components and many of the pieces are really installations and it's an inch difference in, in the way things are hung or the way things are placed can be quite crucial. So I'm really concerned that there is not enough time to set the exhibition properly. We have tonight and uh, this preview starts tomorrow and I guess it's like your boyfriend picking you up on the first date and coming a few hours too early and you are not ready yet. So that's how I feel tonight before the preview tomorrow morning. Shock. My initial reaction was shock. But, uh, a lot of the work wasn't constructed yet, so in other words, the pieces were still being placed in the plexiglass frames and, and uh, work was loose and I didn't have a full appreciation for what it was going to be, and it was, yeah, it's, it's, very, it's okay. different, you know, I'm, I'm yeah, first to admit, I'm accustomed to paintings yeah. and sculpture, and, yeah. and, and so, notwithstanding having done work for jo with Joanna before, it was like, how's this going to work? And I think it was not even so much the night that we hung, what was the, the first night that we hung the show, and we started about six o'clock, and we worked till about 12.30, it took six hours just to do the banners and a little bit of the <laughs> constructs. Once, it wasn't even when the banners were up, it was when the constructs began to take shape and form that it was like, okay, now I'm beginning to see where this is going and the, the, the um, any unease kind of quieted down. Yeah. Uh, I know at this opening, we're going to have uh, a group of models, 10 young ladies who are going to be dressed in the the material that Joanna makes, the clothing that she makes. There's a professional makeup artist that will have them done up with long nails, done up on the face. Uh, interesting, like very unusual headgear with silkworms in the headgear. And uh, it's going to be quite a show. It will not just be art on the wall. It will be a show. It's a fabulous building for her work. And it really speaks to the prodigiousness of the artist. I mean, this is extraordinarily uh, ambitious. This, this body of work in a single show, this is an ambitious project. We're thrilled, thrilled to have this exhibition. And there's someone here which, who most of you know. Uh, I'm not going to do a long introduction, but many of you will know Ian Davidson. And Ian's going to introduce Joanna. Thank you very much. It's an honor to do this. Joanna and I have been friends for 30 odd years. Uh, this whole show, based on the cocoon, of, of the silk cocoon, is, is one of the series of exhibitions she's planning to do dealing with various fibers. But she, she did an exhibition two years ago dealing with flax, about which I knew nothing, but then it came from her. This is about silk. Uh, and, uh, and as you can see, it, she, she has these silk cocoons, these little tiny cocoons, all used as a, as a basis of the work all over the gallery, which she has made in her studio at the university. And uh, she, got, she goes to India several times a year and came back with, with the wonderful materials and, and silkworms, and then found the source of the mulberry leaves, which is what they have to eat. They won't eat anything else. So hence the mulberry bushes up front, and. Uh, the marvelous variations on the cocoon in all the different ways around the gallery. So I hope you'll have a good time and look well everything here, because it's really it's truly marvelous work. And uh, we're very lucky to have someone like Joanna.
in this community. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and I suggest that all the men go out and visit Karim, too. That's <laughs> next door. Anyway, thank you very much. <laughs> Joanna, who is so modest, but anybody who meets Joanna is, is struck by this intuitiveness, this, this great wisdom, and it comes from deep within. And it's not simply all her academic achievements, but it's her experience in traveling, it's her experience in, in, in talking to others you know, from different cultures, her visits to India, her visits to Poland, spending time, and, and she's a great listener. And I think what's exciting is to realize that the growth that she's made in the last couple of years, and it's exciting to, to think about you know, where she may go from here, where she's going to take this work. So I know that I, for one, am very much looking forward to what will happen after this and where she'll go after this in her explorations. Uh, you know, I, I expect um, in the next two to four months, I'll hear about what the next show is, and we'll absolutely look forward to that. Yes. Hi, hello, Kaya. Thank you. Emperor, Empress has not gone. You are the Emperor. <laughs> Pretty shoes, though. <laughs> 